continue with our internet and teen birth rate example. These data are gathered from looking at public records and CDC data on teen births. If you're interested, you can actually click on that data source if you're in the PDF and go see it. So what type of design is this? All right, well, first off, it's not a designed experiment. A designed experiment would require us to be able to have as the researchers have some kind of magical power to be able to say this state gets this kind of high-speed internet and this state gets this kind of high-speed internet, which is obviously impossible. All right, so this couldn't be a design experiment. So that means it's an observational study. Well, cohort observational studies are when you're tracking a group of people over the course of multiple years, usually. Um, there's a famous one that is a group of nurses that have been tracked for, you know, 40, 50 years, etc. So this is not a cohort. So that leads these two. And it's actually case control because what you're doing is you're looking at records from the past, right? This is all based on records of 2021. And this is based on records of 2021 for the CDC and for other things. So you're looking at records that's case control. It's not really looking at where they are at a snapshot and moment in time. You're not asking them the questions. You're just looking at what they already had. All right, so now why can we well, explain why we cannot say that having higher household internet access causes lower teen birth rates in a state? All right, so somebody looking at this might say, hey, I want to have lower teen birth rates. All I've got to do is increase the internet and ta-da, like magic, it'll work. And what this particular question is saying is, no, 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 that's not going to work, right? It's not the case that internet causes lower teen birth rate, although they do go hand in hand. There is a strong or moderate negative relationship here, right? So what is happening is there's other things that are going on, right? So correlation is not causation. And I actually have a script for this, just for the start of it. Let's go look at it. Um, correlation is not causation in observational studies, which this is one, because there are lurking of variables that would affect both X and Y, such as... Hmm. All right, so I've got to get back to my visualizer. <laughs> one second. Uh, there it is. Okay. There um, are lurking variables such as, we don't have to worry about the X and Y, just realize that's going on in the background. Oops, I'm spelling the word lurking wrong. So lurking variables such as, all right, well, let's think about this. We have states, and we can see them in the graph if we look at it. We have states that are generally higher internet access, which is over here on the right, right, these points, higher internet access and a lower teen birth rate. And over here, lower internet access and a higher teen birth rate. It's not the internet that's causing the teen birth rate, right? That's our argument, it's that there's something else going on. And one could argue that it's probably income, right, wealth. States that are over here on the right tend to be wealthier states, right? They would tend to be states that have higher average incomes. So they can afford high-speed internet, internet access. And um, teen birth rates tend to go with poverty, although not always, right? But it's a trend. So in this case, we would argue the income level of the state, the average income level of the state. Oh, I Hold on, I've got to move this. This is how I'm building these videos, and it keeps getting in my way. There it is. Go away. There. Such as um, average income or education level, say. That's a couple variables. So average income or average education level in the state. States with higher income, higher education levels tend to have lower, um, lower, sorry, more internet access and lower teen birth rates. They tend to go together. Right? So this is your lurking variable. There's one. There's another one. All right. Find y if x equals 89.4 using the linear regression equation. Interpret these values in the context of the situation. 
Okay, so remember that the equation is y hat equals 182.446 take away 1.857x. That's the equation that was written. Again, you can see it. It's always the fourth line. Well, the third line from the title, right? So there's the title at the top. Dependent, independent, so that's the y, that's the x. Then here's the equation right here. Now I'm going to use Desmos to do this calculation. So Desmos, and then you can just type it. 182.446, take away 1.857, oops, except I have to type it correctly, 857 times, and then it was 89.4, so 16.43. And timesing, I can either do that times dot right there, which I can get to above my 8, so if you shift 8, it looks like a little star on your keyboard, but it's the same thing, okay? So 16, I'm going to write that down, 16.43. So I want to know 182.446 take away 1.857 times 89.4, which was 16.43. Oh, you'll notice I'm using 89.4. I don't change it to anything. I just leave it 89.4. Um, because if you look at the table, it was full of whole numbers like that. Right? So I'm not messing with it. I just use it. All right, so this is the value, so wh what does it mean? All right, so here's the answer. So there's the y, y, y hat, whatever. Now, what does it mean? Interpret the values, or, or both of those things in the context of the situation. A state with 89.4% of households having high-speed internet. is expected to have a teen birth rate of 16.43 births per 1,000 females aged 15 to 19. So I'm really explaining both the x and the y and including units for these. Now, Michigan, <laughs> where I live and work, had an internet rate of 89.4 in 2021, and it had teen birth rate of 15.1 births per 1,000 females aged 15 to 19. So find the residual. All right, so the residual, there's a formula for it, and it's actually on the yellow packet if I go grab it right here at the bottom. It's the observed y minus the predicted y hat. In other words, it's the actual y minus the one you get from the trend line. So I'm going to write that down. It's the actual y minus the, I'm going to write predicted y hat. Okay, well Michigan actually had 15.1 and we predicted 16.43. So now I'm going to have to go find that subtraction. 15.1 take away 16.43 makes negative 1.33. And it's going to have the same units as our y. So this would be births per 1,000 women uh, 15 to 19. I'm just going to leave it at that. We all know what we mean. Technically, the unit on this is also births per 1,000 women, 15 to 19, but I didn't bother with it there because I explained it over here. So as long as I put the unit somewhere, I was fine, right? Whereas down here, there's no place to put the unit other than to write it out because we don't have an explanation portion. As a matter of fact, the explanation is down below. So what does the residual imply here? Okay, well, we have to think about teen births. Right? In general, teen births are uh, not looked well upon. <laughs> right? In general, estates do not want a high teen birth rate. They want a low teen birth rate. So just make a note to yourself, right? because um, 
it, whether we're doing well or doing poorly kind of depends on your point of view, right? So we have, so I'm just going to make a note, teen births, which is our Y, are a frowny face, right? We don't really want teen births, hypothetically speaking. Um, so, or at least the state doesn't really want a lot of them. Um, they tend to be more draining on social services, that kind of thing. Okay, so Michigan was having more teen births than expected due to a negative residual. Michigan is having less teen births than expected due to a negative residual. And then more teen births due to positive residual. Less, you can see how I do this. Okay, well, the bottom two are out, right? This is a negative residual. So since it's negative three and four, there's no way. So we just have to think about were they having more or less teen births. So we expected 16.43 but we only got 15.1. That's how we got a negative number. So it's actually that they're having less teen births. It's this one. It's the second one. Michigan was having less teen births than expected, which also means Michigan, sorry, that's a C, <laughs> was doing well, right? Lower teen births than expected. That's another way I could have asked this. One more thing before I go, I just remind you, um, doing well, doing poorly is a, is a judgment call based on the context for what your Y variable is, right? So if the Y variable is a bad thing, which in this case it generally is, then a negative residual is good because you've got less of the bad thing. If the Y variable is a good thing, then a negative residual will be a bad thing, right? Because you're not getting enough of the good thing. So it, it all depends on your perspective. So you always want to kind of think about the context here and say, you know, okay, we were expecting this, but we got this. That was lower than expected, but that's good, right? Because teen births isn't something that a state particularly wants. All right, I hope that helps you with chapter four and help you make more sense of it all.